Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Knowing Me, Knowing You. And uh, the hot news is I've got a hit on my hands. This show is a hit according to the New Statesman and Society. I don't read it myself, but uh, a researcher uh, ran into my office this week brandishing a review. Um, the headline reads, uh, Post-Modern Partridge, and it says, it says, Alan Partridge is the apotheosis of the three-minute culture. In his hands, the essentially complex becomes inordinately simplistic. So, uh, <laughs> quite proud of that. On the way here, my driver, Colin, uh, dropped me off and he said, Alan, I hope you've got some good guests on tonight. And I have. This is the introduction to them. <clears throat> two times two is four. Two times four are eight. Two times eight are 16. Two times 16 are 32. That was about my limit when I was nine years old. But it's mere piffle to my next guest, <laughs> who is a nine-year-old child prodigy and fellow of Oxford University. <laughs> Please give an academic welcome to, with his father, Simon Fisher. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to Knowing Me, Alan Partridge, Knowing You, John Fisher, aha. Aha. And, and you, Simon Fisher, aha. aha. Not, not so loud into the microphone. There. <laughs> now, Simon, you are a fellow of Oxford University and you're a child prodigy. As a child genius, what do you do? What do you actually do in the day? Well, I don't exactly do, I, I, I am. I, I see each day as a, as a sort of gift that is to be unwrapped, which I do in my own unique way. And, of course, you, you are very unique. Well, one cannot have gradations of uniqueness when either is or is not unique. Right. <laughs> oh, no, you, you know, you're right, you're right. I mean, I mean you, you couldn't be more right. Well, one is either right or not. <laughs> well, no, you are, you're right, and, and, and so am I. Um, uh, now, John Fisher, yes. um, or Simon's dad, as you're more commonly known. Um, <laughs> Simon yes. is obviously a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I can see that, <laughs> see that with his little quips. But um, <clears throat> when did you first realise that Simon was abnormal? Uh, <laughs> uh, gifted, you mean, really? Uh, abnormally gifted. Mm. Um, well, it's when Simon was about 14 months old. Um, I remember looking at him there in his cot, and um, I, I said to him, uh, who does Daddy love, Simon? Who? Who? And uh, guess what Simon said? What? Whom does Daddy love? Whom? <laughs> Whom? That's, he picked up on my grammatical error with his very first word, and uh, <laughs> that's when I knew he was going to be something special. <laughs> yeah, my, my son Fernando wasn't quite as original as that. He said, uh, he said Daddy which somehow I prefer. <laughs> of course, he, he was calling me father soon afterwards. Not daddy. Well, daddy's a vulgarisation. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. says, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John. John, do you ever sit alone at night by the fire with your head in your hands and think to yourself, God have mercy on my soul. I have spawned a monster. I... <laughs> I've created Frankenstein. No, no, no. I mean, Simon's a wonderful child. No, never, never. Well, that's nice. I'm sure that Frankenstein's parents found it within their hearts <laughs> to love him. Interjection. Uh, there is no such monster as Frankenstein. Uh, there is, actually. It's, it's, it's in a film and it's a certificate X. You wouldn't have seen well, it. Well, I've read the book by Mary Shelley and Frankenstein is the name of a Genevan student who creates Frankenstein's monster. Are you any good at sport, Simon? Sport induces violence in the common man. Yeah, cobblers. I like sports and I'm not violent. You're just scared of breaking your glasses. I don't wear glasses. Well, you should. <laughs> I, 
I like sport. Um, in fact, uh, I represented my school at uh, the London School Swimming Championships when I was 15. Um, Your bronze medal will probably come in a bit handy because, uh, you know, if, if uh, Simon fell into a canal, you could dive in and save him. <laughs> yes, I certainly I wouldn't could. be so stupid as to fall in. No, but you might get pushed in. <laughs> Why don't you just say what you mean, Mr Partridge, is that you think that I deserve to be pushed in a canal. So if you think I do, then who do you think should push me in? Who? Who? Whom? Whom? Uh, no, uh, in, in this context, whom, which is the uh, accusative dative, is not applicable. Is he right? Yes, he's right. I <laughs> Why don't you just say what you mean, which is that you would like to push me into a canal, Mr Partridge? All right, then. I, Alan Partridge, would like to push you, Simon Fisher, into a very deep, disused canal. There, it's not so difficult, is it? No. In fact, I feel a lot better, thank you. Thank you very much. You're very honest. I, sir, to be honest as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. That's very worthy of Shakespeare, that. Very good. It is Shakespeare. Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's better than that. It's worthy of the great bard. <laughs> Have you ever seen Hamlet? Uh, Simon yes, Hester, yes. Please. I saw it with Alan Rickman. Who did you see it with? My wife, Carol. <laughs> no, no, no. Who's playing the lead? Hamlet. Uh, oh, yes, the great actor Bert Hamlet. Simon, no, which actor on, was playing now. the lead? Um, uh, yes? Bernard Cribbins. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was before you were born. You wouldn't remember it. Have you seen Citizen Kane? Yes, I've watched every episode. Power to the people. Yeah. Have you seen Beauty and the Beast? Yes. John Cocteau's? No. Have you read Metamorphosis? Yes. Who's it by? No, I haven't read it. Haven't. Have you read any Dickens? No. Do you go to the bank? No. Can you no. play chess? No. Do you know any Russian? Uh, no. What, no. What about you? I'll you. Be anything. Right, right, you. Have, have you got any pubic hair? <laughs> No, I'm 37 and I've got plenty. All right? Can you do this? Ah. Uh, no, because my voice has Exactly. Broken. Don't forget it. And, and, and uh, one more. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm a boy. Really? My name's Simon. Really? It could be Simone. Could be Simone because no, no, you sound no, like right. a girl. I'm a boy. And my yeah, name is Simon. Yeah. You've, you've got something on your shoulder there. <gasps> oh no! You've gone too <gasps> far. You really I apologise. No, it's mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry. My mistake. I'm not very good with kids. It's Carol's. I've got a bad temper. But you are a little shit. <laughs> that said, that said, thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Fishers. OK, now, if you just want to move chairs... Right. <clears throat> my next guest. Look into my eyes. You are feeling very sleepy. If my soothing voice is soothing enough, it should be sending you listeners at home to sleep. Are you asleep? Well, wake up, because I, Alan Partridge, am not a hypnotist. But my next guest is. I'm told she's going to hypnotise me. I might end up like one of those zombies from the living dead. Of course, my arms won't be dropping off. She, uh, she <laughs> hails from across the Great Lake. Good old uncle, US of stateside. She's as American as chocolate chip biscuits and mum's apple tart. But uh, that's where comparisons with a tart must end. <laughs> Lest I come to a sticky end. Ladies and gentlemen, she's not a tart. She's a lady hypnotist with a set of pins that'll hypnotise any bloke. The big question is, what's the name of her game? Please welcome Janie Katz. Janie Katz, knowing me, Alan Portage, knowing you, Janie Katz, aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. No, aha. Uh -huh. You say aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. OK, right. What's the name of your game? Is it a game? Has it got a name other than hypnotism? Really, what I practice is hypnotherapy, not hypnosis. Right. So I try to distance myself from the kind of showbiz 
um, you know, the razzmatazz side of it. I'm not out to make fools of people. I'm there to use hypnotherapy as a form of uh, helping people to open up their minds. Right, because I saw a brilliant hypnotist, uh, Tony, Le <laughs> Tony Lemesma, he was called. He was brilliant. <laughs> he, he was fantastic. He had, he had blokes crying like babies. He had women on all fours barking like dogs. It was really first-class entertainment. Yeah, it I really was. <laughs> fantastic. He's, uh, but he's very popular. He's booked right through till next summer. Um, Unavailable, hence your good self. Um, <laughs> now, but uh, you, you, you were in London uh, promoting your new book. That's right, yes. Well, I, I actually know New York quite well. Oh, you do? Mm, yeah. I popped over there, and I, and I really did get into, uh, as, as Billy Joel put it, I really did get into a New York state of mind. Um, I bet, yeah. yeah. I mean, I jumped in a cab, and I said, Cabby, take me to the core of the Big Apple. I want to check out the pit. <laughs> Dude, I really did. You know, oh, say that. God. Yeah. Just look, next time, just say Manhattan. And well, you'll I, get there. No, I, no, I want to go to the centre of New York. <laughs> yeah, that is Manhattan. Right, well, that's, that's not where I want to go. <laughs> where do you want to go? Bloomingdale's. Yeah, you're in Manhattan. Right, OK, I'm in Manhattan. What do I do now? <laughs> you just, you get in the cab... And you say to the driver, take me to Manhattan, mm -hmm. to Bloomingdale's. OK, I'm, I'm outside Bloomingdale's. <laughs> what, what next? What do I do now? What do you mean? You've hypnotised me. <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh, no. I see, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought... I no, said, you'll I, know, Alan. I thought you just sort of slid into it. No. It's just that you were staring at me. Um, I'm sorry. No, I, I just find you fascinating. What? In, in what way? <laughs> Clinically. Really? <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. You, Janie Katz, hypnotist. I, Alan Partridge, clinically fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> now, you're... Uh, now, I believe right now I'm very fortunate because you're going to hypnotise me. I certainly am, yes. Great. Um, obviously, we don't have much time, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a, a kind of vague gesture towards it. Uh, but the idea is that what we'll try to do is to project onto, let's say, the curtain of your mind, mm -hmm. a series of images from your past. OK, well, I'll draw back my curtains. Good. <laughs> Behind which you will find a neck curtain. <laughs> you may lift that up, should you wish. Thank you. And we'll see if there are any skeletons lurking in the cupboard. The, the, cur <laughs> the curtain cupboard. In your mind. My mind's curtain cupboard, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the first thing to do is to get you relaxed. OK. So if you can just lie on... What do you... Right, just... Just put this peg what? on my nose. Why are you putting a peg on your nose? Well, because I, I was told that the, the, your blood pressure increases during hypnotism and it could lead to a nosebleed. No. No. <laughs> no, it's nonsense. Who told you that? The researchers. I think it was probably a joke. <laughs> <laughs> OK. No, no, that's all right. It's OK. Well... I mean, take it off. Well, because... I'll take it off if I wish to yeah, take it off. Yeah, you can't relax with a peg on your nose. If I, if I shall be the judge of whether I should take the <laughs> peg off your nose, and as it happens, I have decided to take the peg off. <laughs> so I'll do that now. <clears throat> OK, just lie back on the couch, okay. if you would be so kind. Right, I'm lying back on the couch, listeners. OK, just try to concentrate. Now, I'm going to count you down from three, and in that time, I want you to relax every muscle in your body, OK? And then you will be hypnotised. Three, two, one. Now, Alan, without opening your eyes, I want you to tell me what you can see. A pair of plimsolls. <laughs> All right. Now, who do they belong to? Little boy. Do you recognize the little boy? Yes, it's Alan Partridge. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, Alan, I want you to just step inside Alan Partridge. OK. Now... Alan, would you tell me how old you are? I'm eight years old. And where are you at the moment? I'm at the bottom of Tandle Hill. Where's Tandle Hill? It's near the school. OK. Now, um, describe what you can see in front of you. There's about 80 boys. So you're not alone? No, they're at the top of the hill. And where are you? I'm at the bottom. Can't keep up with them. It's a cross-country run. 
Okay. It's cold. It's very cold. Why are you so cold if you're running, Alan? I haven't got any shorts on. <laughs> Why not? Stephen McCombs taking them off me. Can, can you see Stephen McCombs? Yes, he's waving them about with his hand. Is he's saying, smelly Alan Fartridge. <laughs> smelly Alan Fartridge. I'm yeah. not smelly. No, smelly I know Alan that. Smelly Alan Fartridge. Okay, Alan. All right, now look, you're not happy, are no. you? No. No. Should we take you away from here? Yes. Let's take you someplace where you are happy. Oh, good. Okay? We're going there right now. Mm. Are you there? Yes. Good. Now tell yes. me what you can see. I'm in class. Yeah? The headmaster's coming. Right, and what's happening? Oh, he's, he's looking very pleased. He said, he, said, he said someone's won an essay writing competition. Someone's written an essay on sport and it's won a prize. Mm -hmm. What else is he saying? He said, is there an Alan Partridge in the class? Would Alan Partridge identify himself? And what's happening now? I'm standing up. And they're all applauding me. Terrific. What are you saying, Alan? I'm saying... I'm Alan Partridge. I am Alan Partridge. I've won the essay writing competition. Of that, there's no doubt. Okay, yes. I have won it. Things will now be very different. No longer will I be called infantile names because okay. I've won the competition. Great. Now, Alan, we have to. We're running a little short of time. We have to now bring you back, okay? No, I don't want to come back. No, you'll be fine. You, you have to come back because you're in the middle of a, of a talk show. I like it here. Well, you like, like it, you like it here too. No, I don't want to go back. Oh, I don't want to be on the radio. Come on, Alan. You're Nobody very popular. Nobody listens to Radio 4. Alan, okay. <laughs> Nobody listens to Radio 4. All right, Alan, just concentrate because I can't bring you I back. I want to be on the telly. Otherwise. So just, okay, I'm going to count to three and you have Let to come back. One, two, three. So what I want to know is, when are you going to hypnotise me? I've done it. Really? Yes, it's been done. Just think about what is foremost in your mind at the moment. Oh, the essay writing competition. That's right, back at school. Anything else from school? Do you remember? Yes, cross-country runs. Tandle Hill, you yeah, remember that? great stuff, yeah. That's Lovely. right, yeah. yeah. You enjoyed Shelly that? Ellen Fartridge. What? <laughs> no one calls no, me that. On, no one Simon. calls me that. No. I was just referring him this back is, to his past. Simon, this is a very important point. You no. must not abuse this privilege I, because we have been privileged to see smell. inside Alan's memory. Look, no, this wanna, is irrelevant, well, Alan. You don't have to defend no, yourself. No, I want to clear this up once and for all. There's this has no been, need. This has been hanging in the air okay. for about 30 okay. years, right? <laughs> I want to clear it up, OK? That Stephen McComb called me smelly Alan Partridge because he thought it was funny, Fartridge, I mean Partridge, he said smelly. I wasn't, my personal hygiene was never in question. I showered regularly, I was never, I didn't smell. The question is, what's Stephen McComb doing now? That's the question, because I host a chat show. What's he doing? I'll tell you what, he's a forklift truck driver with British Leyland. He, I'll tell you what, he lives in Edge Baston. He's got a pathetic life. I've, see, I've parked my car outside his house. I've watched him come and go there. <laughs> And he's got a sad, pathetic life. And McComb, if you're listening, what are you now? You're nothing. And I am Alan Partridge. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, now, you, uh, that sort of about wraps it up. Now, your book's available in the, in the shops this Christmas. It's not a very good advert for my book. I assure you, it does not make you this aggressive. OK, well... Um, yeah, it's called The Future is Behind You, and it is, in, in fact, a therapeutic study. OK, one for the Christmas stocking. Hypnotise your friends. No, no, it's not a show. It's not a party trick. Well, OK, in that case, a very serious book. Slap it on top of uh, Stephen Hawkins' book on your coffee table and uh, impress your friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Janie Katz. Now, order, order, silence in court, order, order, silence in court. <laughs> of course, I don't say things like that, but my next guest does, because he is a lawyer. <laughs> but, not, but not just any old lawyer, he's a young lawyer, who's known as the bad boy of the old Bailey, famous for his natty dress sense and his unconventional behaviour in court. Let us court the enfant terrible of the inner temple. Do you want to get to know him? Yes. yes. Voulez-vous? <laughs> OK. Voulez-vous, Nick Ford? Sit down. 
sit there. Um, I, don't, I don't know what... Knowing me, knowing you, aha. No, there can be no ahas. There's been a dreadful error here. You were supposed to come on to Voulez Vu by ABBA. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Well, I was come on in court to I fought the law by the clash. Because <laughs> I'm a lawyer. You know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, but how, how did it get on here? How well, I just asked the sound guy to play it, you know, I thought it'd be cool. And he just said he'd do it, he didn't say he had to go to anyone else to ask permission. <laughs> no, I just said, slap this on, mate. He said, yeah, cool. No, well, it's not, it's not your fault. I'm it's not saying it is. No, it's not your, it's not, it's not your job that's uh, on the line. <laughs> Let's just start again, all right? With the music. <clears throat> I'll do it. <clears throat> Voulez-vous, aha, take it now or leave, aha, now it's all we gain, aha, nothing promised, no regrets, da ba da ba da ba 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 da ba voulez-vous, aha, Nick Ford. <laughs> Welcome to Knowing Me, Knowing You, Knowing You, aha. Aha, I understand the way you work yes, now. right. Now we've got a rapport. Indeed. Now, you are... Right. You are a very different kind of lawyer. That's right. Yeah. What I say is, like, you know, like, the law is an ass and I kick it. Very good. Very clever. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've done all sorts of things in court. You've, you once abselled into court. Uh-huh. You once did a partial strip. That's right. And you once simulated a heart attack. Yeah. The, the one that was in the press recently is um, the robber, the man who robbed the... Mickey Hall. Basically what happened was he'd, he'd robbed a building society and I felt that there were mitigating circumstances. And so uh, when it came to the summing up, I kind of uh, went in there with all the jewellery on, all the gear, and a, a baseball cap with justice written on it. Very and uh, I just got them to dim all the lights, one centre spot on me. And I went, ladies and gents of the jury... Everybody in the court, hear me one and all. I'm here to plead the case of a guy called Mickey Hall. When he went into the Woolwich on that fateful day, he was an innocent man. He didn't blow no one away. Yeah, he pulled a gun, but the gun was fake. On that piece of evidence at stake, my claim, society's to blame. Look at his face. I rest my case. Very good. I rest my case. Right. I rest my case. Right. Said it. I said it three times and then I just very, very slowly, very dramatically walked backwards into my seat, sat down, the atmosphere was electric. You could have heard a pin drop, man. Amazing. What happened? He got five years. Well, good for you. Right, well, he won't be doing that again in a hurry, would he? I was defending him, Alan. I lost the case. It puzzles me about the law. How can you defend a man who, let's say, has been arrested for murder? Well, because he may be innocent. Well, with the greatest respect, the police are hardly likely to arrest him if he's innocent, are they? <laughs> With slightly less respect, uh, <laughs> haven't you heard of wrongful arrest? No. Guildford 4, Birmingham 6. Well, yes, but that, no, that's, that's diff... I mean, th- now, now, they are innocent. But <laughs> be then... Very, be very careful, Alan, you're on air. No, I think we should, we should go into no, this. No, if it's, I was your lawyer, I would advise you very strongly now yeah. to shut your mouth. Why? <laughs> These people it's, it's... will sue and put an injunction on your show and you'll never broadcast again. Where did you get your shirt from? <laughs> it's, uh, my friend Domo made it. Not so much a shirt, more a sort of... It's a blouse. Yeah. I think that's the word you're blushingly well, groping I'm blushing. for. Blushing. Yeah, I'm it's blushing. a big girl's blouse, well, kind of Errol Flynn. Blouse, look, it's... if you don't like it, you can be honest. This is my whole philosophy. This is what I'm saying, gang. It's like, you know, if there was more honesty and less repression in our society, there'd be less crimes. That's the whole all point. All right, all right, I'll be honest. Be honest. I'll be honest. You are a homosexual. <laughs> Bisexual. Don't pussyfoot. I'm not pussyfoot. The <laughs> point is, there are blokes involved. That's the important thing. <laughs> I mean, you seem very threatened by it, Alan. No, I'm not threatened by you lot. No way. <laughs> Any of you lot had a go, I'd deck the lot of you. <laughs> oh, a tough guy. <laughs> I meant psychologically threatened. Well, whatever. It's okay to explore your sexuality, you know, it's okay to be open. I mean, you know, there's a kid here, Simon, let's bring him into it. I mean, you're just discovering sexuality. You know, no, I'll leave the right kid out of it. Leave him out of it. 
Well, maybe you should have left him out. Just cover his before. ears. Yeah, well, his ear is still bright red from where you hit it at. That was. That you know, was... By the way, Mr. Fisher, if you're seeking legal advice on this, uh, if you want to. I don't need any advice from your sort. Thank oh, well, welcome to, welcome to Homophobics Anonymous. Good, good one. I like that, Mr. Fisher. Don't want any advice from, <laughs> don't want any advice from your sort. Nice. We should go for a drink sometime. <laughs> no, thanks. You're hitting kids, you know, you could end up in jail. Uh, can seriously. I just say something here? Oh, that, no, because, no, please, because technically it wasn't assault, because he didn't actually cause any It was assault, he no, hit you. Assault. Yes, but I was provoking him, I was being precocious. <laughs> the point is, if this was a normal child... I am uh, normal! You are not normal, you're a freak. If this was, <laughs> if this was a... If this was a normal child with a normal father, they would sue you immediately. You should be careful. I don't think you'd like it in prison, all those men. Listen, what are you insinuating? What are you saying? Are you saying that I, Alan Partridge, <laughs> would end up in prison and maybe, what, get friendly with some bloke? Who knows, and Alan? And maybe I'd be in the shower with him and, 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 <laughs> and maybe we'd just start wrestling and mucking about and... <laughs> And then he'd probably start soaping my back down, and and then you know we'd kiss each other tenderly. Is that what you're saying? Because, because that is untrue. It's that, that all is... in your imagination, Alan. Well, if you're insinuating that's what I secretly want. No further questions, Your Honour. No further questions. <laughs> well, um, my researcher said um, you can get him on this question. <laughs> he says I it. very much doubt. Well, I'll read it out. Why does he affect a Cockney accent when he went to Harrow, brackets, which is a public school? <laughs> um, so, my question to you is, why do you affect a Cockney accent when you went to Harrow, which is a public school? I, th I think that... I, don't, I wouldn't say it's affected. I think that... Um... You know, no further you questions, Your Honour. <laughs> yes. Can I just say something here? Yes, go ahead. Because I think we are all here as 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 fine-minded people, and and we're we're sort of wallowing about in a mire when all the beautiful things we could be talking about, and and music and art, and we're on this tawdry show. Yeah, it's not a tawdry show. It is. It is, it is a tawdry show. Is it? Ford, is it? And Mr. Ford is debasing our beautiful oh, language. Oh, yeah. shut up! Look, can we do it again? Just please. Flushing Look, uh, can, can okay. we have order? Order. order. You get a life. Order. Get a life. She thinks that we need to go and have our heads examined. Yes, sir. Well, well, if you think we need therapy, then to who should we go? To who? To who? To who? Hey, hang on a second. <laughs> Sh surely that should be to whom? Yeah, he's right. In this to context, whom? it is to, to whom. whom? No, yeah. You're wrong! Simon, to whom? To whom? 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 I've wet myself, Daddy! Oh, dear. <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> we say goodnight as Simon Fisher, nine-year-old fellow of Oxford University, has wet himself. <laughs> And I, now, Alan Partridge, dry as a bone, <laughs> saying, knowing me, knowing you, would like to thank my guests, Janie Katz, Mad Hippie, Nick Ford, Queer Lawyer, Simon Fisher, Wet Boy, and his dad, a nobody. Thanks to the writers and researchers, Steve Coogan, Patrick Marber, Doom McKeegan, Rebecca Front, and David Schneider. And to my producer, Armando Iannucci. Thank you. Yeah.